Okay, so a small introduction in the Arabia pocket guide. This will be like an extended pocket guide I will cover from minute 00 to like 35 40 minutes and I will cover different civilizations, you know, play styles which are kind of very similar but there are some minorities that do change and this is like just a small introduction so I will try to cover the builds, when to add stables, like what to do, when to add, get upgrades and pretty much all other stuff I can and if you are really not interested in watching the whole long, long hour one, just watch the first Saracen video. That is pretty much the most important one and we'll cover pretty much everything. And then the other ones are just meant as, as an addition. Sorry about this. Uh, as an addition. So, yeah, let's go into it, guys. Okay, so welcome everyone and this will be the first scene pretty much of the arabia pocket guide and i will demonstrate to you doing a live game so we will go over pretty much the first probably around 40 minutes afterwards it becomes really dependent on a lot of different different aspects and so far this game will demonstrate the most basic build order into two stables the transition how you get to imperial and so on when to add extra tcs and just overall how to play pocket again i am not a pro 2k3 player and whatnot so i do make mistakes and we will just try to see what like maybe even i could have done better but overall just the basic build order how to follow it and how to know what to do in certain situations so i will be playing here as the saracens so the reason i choose this game over a lot others than i have is because saracens is a civilization with no eco bonuses, so pretty much what I do here can be done with any other civilization. So let's get into it and then I will start talking. Okay, so I start off obviously by scouting with a scout, building a house with two villagers as you saw, and then picking up the sheep with the third one, which I will now build the second house with, so that's all good. Villagers in the TC, now they go for the sheep. So overall pretty basic stuff, I am also scouting with the sheep. Yeah. So one tip I can give and how I do it is I number my scout on control 1, sheep control 2, it's, uh, at the other sheep control 3, and then I number the villagers on the sheep down here on control 4. So I can pretty much swap, uh, swap like scout, you know, then if I need my villagers to drop pretty much food and whatnot, I just click like, you know, the number 4 on my keyboard, and it's a little bit better than, you know, manually selecting all of them, because you can misclick, you can select the sheep, and then the sheep can start moving, block your villagers, and such. So, you might want to start numbering your villagers under DC, it's just a small tip, you see, even I, I messed it up here, accidentally clicked to build an outpost, other than that, it's all good, so, I added one more villager on the sheeps, because I did get quite late sheep, Typically, if you get sheep, let's say around that one minute mark, it's better to add an extra villager on the sheep just to be safe, so you don't have any idle time. The board order really doesn't change from that. It uh, it will pretty much be the same around 13 villager. You will just see me take one from sheep and then send to boar. Typically, you would already have two on wood by now. So you see I'm dropping a little bit. Uh, you could say I'm dropping a little bit premature. I did not have the smoothest dark edge, but... Other than that, I had pretty much zero idle time, so that's all we want to see. So you see now, second one on the Wumber Camp, third one now, so I would already have four. That would be the only difference, and I have one less on cheap, but again, it won't matter that much. So now, already scouting around, finding my deer, finding my boar, looking for the extra boar and extra sheep. So you want to have eight sheep, two boar, pretty much what you want to have on main eco. So now... I have 4 on wood, I'm getting into boar, I have 6 on sheep, so the next villager will go and build 2 houses. So a lot of people don't do that, a lot of people build the houses with the villager uh, that is about to order the boar. The reason I do this is because first of all you won't get housed, like you know you can forget, then get housed later on because at 18, 20 you're gonna need to build another house. Second of all why I do this is because Pretty much I won't need to build houses till wait dark age and in on, on flank position it's a it's a good start for a wall off. Sometimes even at pockets I will show a scenario later on where I am walling as pocket and I will go over why you should do that. So pretty much the houses already serve as a wall off, you don't get housed and 
pretty much the villagers being efficient even after the first house is built so you don't have any idle time and the second one is getting built as well so now the sheep is done i get the boar under here we go so now the next uh, well, next villagers uh, like at this point it doesn't theoretically matter i did put one more on boar you can also start going out the berries it's not it doesn't matter that much um in this video i did miss two sheep i did not find the two sheep i think they were where were they i have no idea where they were actually actually let's check where were my sheep okay so they were here i did not see them i did not pick them up but that was a little bit unfortunate for me so i will just push in two deer to sub uh, to like pretty much even it out so four on wood now four on berries so the house villager also the house villager afterwards so you save efficiency went to the berries by the way so that's even like again trying to be as efficient as you can you know you build the houses then the villager doesn't need to go back it immediately goes to berries i could have also built the two houses you know in this position sometimes if for example the boar was here so you can also build two houses here and then with the villager you can ward the boar as well you know just try to be as efficient as you can so now the second boar is coming in so the second boar comes in when you're on 160 180 food on the first one then you want to get the second one okay so at this point i have four on berries four on wood 18 out of 25 population and now i will go for the second lumber camp the reason i go for the second lumber camp as fast as i do is because i will need a lot of wood since we are going double stable so we need a lot of wood for the two stables we also do need we also do need a lot of wood for the farms you know then the two tcs down and all of that so wood is very important, I push in the second deer now and I will go scouting. So there already was a question, when do you need to push deer? Um, the thing is, if you find everything you can, pushing deer is always good as pocket. The problem is you might get forwarded if you don't scout. So in a nice communication game, you want to ask who are your wanks, meaning red and blue in this scenario versus. So for example, let's say they tell you you're against player four on their side and orange on this side right so you know that the two players left are yellow and teal and for example you can pretty much tell by their up times if they are up before 12 minutes they might be forwarding right so for example if i see either one of these guys be up before 12 minutes i will immediately start scouting and trying to find if they are forwarding okay also if you really are scared of being forwarded you cannot push the deer and just find eight sheep um two boars and pretty much go and start scouting out the pocket so again you will almost always see people pushing deer you can see this guy pushed deer right lan also let's see lan okay lan didn't push deer lan is already stealing sheep from the enemy uh, flank but that's all fine so like you there are people who push deer there are people who don't like to push there is yellow as well not pushing there although me and gray did push deer so again it's situational if you feel comfortable without pushing deer you can easily not push it if you can and if your speed allows to push it it's very important if your speed allows to push it you might want to do that so now i have four on both lumber camps four on each four on berries and so now the 20 Third out of 25, we'll, fifth, we'll build the house. All good there. Just the dark edge builder is pretty basic, it's pretty simple. And um, so you, you would already ask, what, what would you do with all these villagers without the deer? I would have already placed three farms. Pretty much, you see, my wood count allows me to do that. I would have already placed three farms. And I would have, you know, like the, the rest of the villagers would have been on the sheep. The thing is, I'm minus two sheep, so I'm trying to pretty much even it out by wearing two deer which is about you know that 200 foodish mark it's a little bit more it's like 250 on a good day but just trying to even it even out yeah see and now i'm even doing that adding those two farms already so again the problem is at my level i don't really keep track when i add the farms right so you can add them faster for example if i would have two more sheep i would i could even delay them a little bit more but typically you want to start adding them around this eight nine minute mark if not even faster because you, you you can't have 10 idle villagers under your tc when the sheep runs out you want to start slowly but surely adding them in the dark age and have around six seven farms already in the dark age if you can so now you will see me add one more and now i'm going on to gold 
I'm also as my scout. Okay, I'm still I'm still trying to find my sheep. By the way, at this point, I'm still trying to find my sheep, but I won't because they're here. Like, look at that. Just oh no, they they got stolen. Okay, so they just got stolen by someone. Okay, so now we put three on gold. We are on six, 26 out of 30 mark. So um, one more thing about womb before I start that saying the second thing. If you don't feel comfortable wearing boars without womb, get quick uh, get womb when you're going after the first boar. And if not, get womb before you quick up the feudal age. So now I add one more on wood and I add one more on wood. So I will cancel the bills now. So now we have... I will put this on stragglers. You see, I'm already adding a ton of farms. I, I will get womb now and then quick up. So, small recap on the Dark Age. We have 4 on berries, 5 on wood, 5 on second wood, 3 on gold, and we already have 2, 4, 6 farms. And 4 on stragglers right now. So, at this point, at this point, you can... So, just one second, let me put the barracks. Okay, so I quick up, build the barracks. So, I will put the barracks and then a the house with this villager. What you need to keep the track of, I'm very greedy, I will push even one more there, but at this point what you need to keep track of, once you reach Feudal Age, you need 300 wood for Stable and the Blacksmith. That's all you need to keep track of. Literally all you need to keep track of. You can keep adding farms, if you know you will have that 300 wood. So for example, I already have 200, right, and once I will be about 50% Feudal Age, I will be already on a 300 wood mark. So if I, if without this deer, I would have added like two more farms, for sure. See, already closing in on that 300 wood mark. So definitely could add at least one or maybe even two more farms. And that is just because you have already 10 on wood, which is really, really good wood income. And you need that for the double stable. A lot of people like doing 27 plus 2. I wouldn't recommend 27 plus 2 because the reason pros do it, because it's very situational and it's very needed. So now I, I will explain because again, there was a person who asked why we're on the subject. Why go, why go 28 or do you go 27? So I will explain why I almost pretty much always do 27 nowadays. And also if you go one stable, if you go two stable. So while we're going on that feudal age, I will go over that because obviously it's very important for a lot of you people. So let me start with that already. So first thing first, and then I'm, I, will, I will be saying is the reason 27 and 28 so obviously 27 is one villager faster meaning let's say briefly 30 seconds faster okay so why 28 is pretty much as good on timing and a little bit better on the eco side so let's say you do 27 let's say you do 27 and you have my distance right so pretty good pretty far distance towards my enemy flank you know pretty close to my flank so let's say we would have this guy player 5, do 27, which he's already doing, right? Oh no, he's actually doing 28 as well. So never mind. He, he just did, went up without womb. Yes, he very, he's very greedy. You should never do this. It's very greedy to go up without womb. But other than that, for, let's say he would do 27 pop. So he would have 26 villagers. I have 27. Let's say he would reach Castle Age 30 seconds faster than me, right? The time he will need to cross this distance to get to my flank, already those seconds will be passed, right? So pretty much, even if I do... Oh. Okay, I don't know what happened there. Um, okay, sorry. Um, sorry about that. So as I was saying, even if I do 28, me being 30 seconds faster, having the defender's advantage will be mean that we will plus minus be on the same page in this situation, right? We will be pretty much at the same time here, just because of the distance alone, right? Obviously, he could be 10 seconds faster, but still, it's a lot better to do 28. And the second reason why it's better, because if you do 27, 27 plus 2 into 2 stable is very hard to pull off. And now I will explain why 2 stable is better than 1 stable. And you will see a good example, you will see a very good example why 2 stable will work better as 1 stable, but... The most common one for me to say is you can get six knights out very very fast and they can do a lot of damage they can completely neglect the flanks army and flanks you know as we know on Arabia in most cases are in that feudal age going for those archers as you can see double archery coming out from my flank double archery from the enemy flank so you can see that in these okay level around 80 nix level 
Arabia games, high 17, 18x level, right? We see people, you know, we see militia here over the feudal age. Like, we see a lot of aggression being done in the dark and feudal age. So the double stable helps to support your flank a lot faster and you can pick off your enemy feudal age army. So that's a lot better. Second reason is that the double stable has a really smooth follow up on the 3 TC because at that point, once you have those six knights out, you pretty much can stop knight production. If you don't waste your six knights, they will be pretty much good for you for quite some time. So we will see me make those six knights and then I will talk over that. But just 28 is a lot smoother, it's a lot safer, it's easier to do, it's more practical because 6 knights out really fast is very deadly. And even if the pocket does 27, you will still be in the same time because of the distance. So even if he comes to you, you will already be in the cast wedge by the time he reaches your base and you can defend with the two stable defenders advantage. And then you will just have a lot better economy. So, let's keep going. Hope I covered that as good as I could. I, I could. So you now see me, and the barracks is up. I'm building two houses with the villager. Now you will see me take two more villagers. I'm, wrong, I'm not gonna make these weird mistakes. Okay, now I do it. Okay, so now we're in the feudal age. You will see me add a blacksmith. You, you see, 450 wood. So if without this deer, I still would uh, could, could be able to add, you know, two or even three more farms. Uh, yeah, pretty much two more farms that would leave me with 330 wood, which would be enough for the stable. So here we go, stable coming out with two villagers, blacksmith with one villager. And with a really good, with a really good civilization with economy builds, if you can afford, get double with axe, right? So for example, let's say Mongols or Persians or Huns even. Like, the Saracens don't have the economy, so I can't do that, but with a really good civilization, you can get double with axe once you're already in feudal age. So, I make two villagers, now I'm on 29 villager mark, and I quick up to the castle age. Right, so now I'm quick enough to the castle age, always good, and you can see that, for example, Lan is ahead of me, and the reason he's ahead, because he's one villager less, right? So let's see how he plays this out, and let's compare, I'm not like trying, just trying to compare the builds, he's a very good player, a lot better than me, so let's see how he plays, he already is walled up as you can see, and so he's doing one stable, by the looks of it, he might add a second one, he's also playing gods, so no eco bonus on his side as well, so let's see how we play it out compared to him, you know, just comparing the two stable to one, also what, some things to note, I do add two more now on the gold, so now we have five on gold, five on one wood, five on second one, Four on berries, and then everyone else is on farms. I have two, six. Uh, I have two, or four, six farms right now. You, I could have already had seven or eight, and now I will pretty much get the double with axe in the next few seconds. So now just a little bit idle time, as I said. I messed it up a little bit because I was focused on my scout. Just trying to do some harassment on that part, but that is all fine. So you will see, I'm getting double with axe now. And at this point, the reason I'm not adding more farms because I'm waiting for the horse cover upgrade to research. So you will see me click horse cover any second now. Here we go, I'm getting it now. And now I will add a second stable and I, have, I will add two more farms. You will see me add a little bit more later on as well. So, I will be double stable against Juan, who we can all see is on one stable. Right, so let's see. My flank is also harassing him, we also trapped one of his villagers. So that is pretty good. And let's see how it will play out from here. So just a lot of mixes happening, sorry. I don't know why I went there. Okay, so you can already see I have a lot of resources stockpiling. It's pretty good economy. Almost 500 wood, almost 400 food, 300 gold already. So pretty good, you know, pretty nice build. Wait one second, let me lower the audio a little bit maybe. I think it's a little bit more too high. Okay. So, double stable is done. Okay, so now it is very important. Tip: you can you can get wheelbarrow instantly, but I usually make two to three villagers. Okay, two to three villagers, and then get wheelbarrow. So you will see me queue six, uh, four knights, uh, like two knights from each stable, right? And now we will go over why this is such a good play to do. So we can see Lan is still one stable, he will now clean up the forward from Mr. Full. And now I will have to clean up these archers from player 6. I don't know they're there yet, but my ally will tell me, so I will need to clean up that, right? And, you know, it's it's pretty much 6 archers with fletching. So let's say I would be one stable 
It would be pretty hard, right? I would make one knight and he could pick it up, so I would need to mass. Obviously, it will still be okay, but you will see now the nice advantage from having two stable. Here we go, two knights good up from each. I'm, I, I will delay Boso, so I'm not getting Boso. You can see Janik is getting Boso, Lan is getting Boso. I like the leg Boso if you don't have a good economy civilization till around below 20 minutes, right? We already have second TC coming down. You will see me drop a third one soon. And I will delay Boso for some bit because I just can't get everything running. Here we go. I made two villagers. Gonna make one more as here we go. Already two knights coming out. So pretty explosive with the double stable, you see me, Q. So I, I will make six knights in total. So now he Xs the archers, I know I can take them, I have the double stable knights already three knights out. Now I will go for the engage, and I will clean all of this up, right? And this is just a small example why two stable is so good. You have the advantage on the enemy flank, and you can easily clean up any feudal army. Let's say he would have even more archers, let's say he would have like ten archers. Still with six knights, it's pretty easy to clean. If you micro your knight, so he's focusing this weak knight. You, you, you see, I'm, I'm trying to like uh, kite a little bit around with it, and now I will just, you know, let, let him clean it up. So now, six knights out for me, 30 TC incoming, second TC incoming, so 3 TC and that, and now I get the wheelbarrow. So, as I said, I made three villagers, then got the wheelbarrow. You see, I'm pretty nice on the economy, I have the resources, now I'm just going with my flank. So, you can see I'm on six military. And you, if you look at Wan, he's barely on two knights, right? And he's on three town centers. He has one village advantage, but he's six knights down, right? And this is just me being able to mass so much faster than him and, you know, having the access to the double stable. Obviously, he did get harassed. He did get harassed, that is true. But, you know, there were also archers coming to my a little bit later, though I did clean him up. So, obviously, there are a lot more aspects, but... Other than that, it's going pretty okay. Let's see, Janik on this side, you see, he did one stable as well. And he already has 3 TC going down. He didn't get wheelbarrow, so he is 3 villagers ahead of me right now. So, let's see how it will play out. So, 3 TC is already done. You see, I'm, like, just going full boom now. All TC is full of villagers. At this point, I am adding farms every time I have enough wood. So, it's all about adding farms and getting that farm eco up. I still keep 5 on gold, because I will need to go later on. So now you can see all of the TCs are working for me. I'm going full boom right now, having the six knights. There will be a lot of Xs. It's just us communicating. You see, Lan only two knights right now. He has only two military at this point, right? And even though, like, these six knights will pretty much serve me to a long, long time. So obviously, as I said, not ideal. You have to try to fix all of that. So... It's going pretty okay, I'm booming up 40 villagers already, getting that boso now on 20 minutes and diving a little bit on these archers. So again, you, the thing is, a lot of newer pockets, and me myself, I was always wondering how do they all get the knight mass, you know, how do they all mass the knights so fast? And it's really not about massing them so fast, it's about not losing them, right? So these six knights you will see will serve a really long time, and I will, we will also cover the aspect of building a monastery and healing them up. And how does that play out, and when to add more stables, and when to start pumping them out. So at the moment, it's all about those six knights, and boom. And you see, I'm not making any more military, I didn't even get some idle time, forgot to build houses, but I'm just focusing on my boom. So, we come in here with the knights, now he has way more archers, we will just back off. You see, we're already going back. That's a tactical retreat. I'm not diving. I will not sacrifice my army. And now, already on 21 minutes, I'm getting the plus one. Because, obviously, I got the wheelbarrow. I have how many farmers? Almost 20 farmers. The economy is going great. I have a lot of wood in my bank. I have a lot of gold. So, the economy is looking pretty good, right? I'm booming pretty nicely. 44 villagers. Land is on 46. Right? So, him being... Him being two, him being ahead in the in the stables are pretty much bringing him only two villagers ahead, and I don't even think he has wheel, wheel, wheelbarrow, right? So let's look at that. So he doesn't even have wheelbarrow, so that's the villager difference. Again, he did get hit, but I'm just showing that it does not differ that much from the one stable and two stable if you do everything correctly. Okay, so now he's getting plus one as well. I I, I I'm not trying to like. You know, say anything bad or whatnot, I'm just trying to compare how the two builds play out. You can see I'm already on 50 villagers, almost on 22 minutes. 
which is pretty nice economy. So now I'm adding a little bit more knights because I can keep sustain of my tree TC and add some knights. And again, I get house. So again, this game wasn't ideal, but it was pretty good and well executed. So it's pretty nice. So now I have the eco for it. I get wheelbarrow. You want to get wheelbarrow around 22, 23 minutes. Wait, is 24 minutes. I mean, not wheelbarrow, handcart, right? So this is a very fast handcart. And the reason I do that, because we're already sitting on, you can see 27 farms, 27 farmers, right? So it's all about that food eco. It's all about getting those farms as fast as possible, placing them down so that a lot of people don't like doing it. I know a lot of people don't like doing it, right? But I like to do it because you have a lot of farms and you will see my food will spiral out of control. You can see Lan, he is on eight mil tree already. I'm on eight mil tree, so I'm not behind you know, I'm not. I'm keeping up with the knights. I am four villagers behind, but I'm getting the upgrades on the economy wheelbarrow and now handcart on the way, and I'm still keeping up the knight production. So now we will just camp here with the hill, and you see my KDA is 7-1. I haven't lost any knight yet. The one unit I lost was the scout. So try to be as careful as you can with these. So now I get, I'm get i getting bloodlines, we know, I know they're coming here, he already has bloodlines and plus one as well. I don't have bloodlines, which I will get now. You see he's only now getting wheelbarrow on 24 minutes. Now we will go for the fight, and I know we can take the fight, so it will just wait. I'm just waiting for the bloodlines right now. Once the bloodline is done, you will see me go in. And if you look at my home, still everything's working, you know, I'm pumping those TCs up. And now at that 24 minute mark, I'm starting to add a lot more stables. You can see Lan is also adding a lot more stables. He already has three stables, so I will start adding. Typically, if you do one, well, one stable, you're supposed to add stables at around 22 minutes. On the two stable, you can pretty much start adding on 23, 24 minutes. I start... I, the, my guideline, again, it's situational, but if you if you are in a nice position, and I know me and my flank are in a good position, right? So, you know, he's not dying, and we can go for a more standard play. I add stables once the hand card is done. Once hand card is done, I start adding stables. I also get the gold upgrade, and then it's all about spamming knights in the castle age. Right? So let's see how we play it out further on. I have 61 villagers, by the way, now, which is pretty much like same villagers as you can see with Janik, um, same villagers with Wan, and three villagers behind Darkie wise. So you can see everybody's pretty close villager wise around that 61 villager mark. So we're not behind, we're not ahead, we're just where we're supposed to be. And now I go, do, do go for the fight, and I will lose some knights here, obviously, but we're going for the 2v2 fight, so we have to take it. Yeah, a little bit missed micro for me here. I did get a little bit chased off, but my ally is already in the castle so it will be a worthwhile fight for us, as we will pick up way more. Now I'm getting gold mining, as I said. So I survived with four knights. It was pretty painful engagement. Lan also survived four knights, but look how much trust both my guy has compared to the enemy. So pretty worth it for me. Now let's see how we proceed. So now I pretty much have Tree stable, I'm adding the fourth one now, and you can see the food is already spiraling out of control, the wood is really high, now I will add a lot more on gold. Typically, this is what I'm still trying to perfect, when I start to like spam these knights, I do miss the gold yet. Now, so, also there was a talk when to add the monastery, it really, you don't want to add it too fast because monastery is like three farms at that point, but you want to add it when you are f facing a lot of archers, so let's say... At, at, for example, now you see I have a lot of weak knights, we took the big fight, and now we want to go heal them up. So, let's say around that 25 minute mark you can add a monastery pretty, uh, pretty much, if you can, and then you bring your weak knights, you heal them up, and then you bring them back to battle. If you're facing full feudal age archers, and, your pocket, and you are raiding and then going back, you can add it faster, but typically... Again, it really depends on the situation. If you are really, really like, like have like, let's say six low nights at, you know, those first six nights are all really low on 22 minutes, then you can try to squeeze the monastery in there. But at, at this point, it's all, it's really all about trying to, trying to mess up as much nights as you can and then heal them up. So now you see me adding even the fourth stable because again, I have a lot of wood. You will see me drop a lot more farms. We're already sitting on 37 farms. So the economy is looking pretty good. So, let's see how we proceed from here. So, let's go. 
I'm not getting plus two yet because we did kill a lot of crossbows from purple, so I'm not really scared of crossbows, so no plus two yet until I get my economy going. And now we will try to pressure over on purple. So you see the monastery is done. I don't really have the gold as well to get it all done because I'm spamming so much knights. So you see like my stables are even idle. And I will get the market to balance that with a little bit. But now you see us going in and this is just... We, we took the good fight. The last good fight. Right before. So now you see all of these knights I am actually bringing home to heal up. All of these five knights I'm bringing which are low HP. Now killing purples crossbowmen once more. So you can see, the, so the, the guidelines you want to have is 27 minutes, you want to have around that 100 population. That is like complete pro level, obviously. I'm, I'm gonna get, get that 100 population by minutes 28, but that's all good. So you can see 80 villagers, you know, close to that 100 pop. Economy is looking pretty good, also mining the second gold already. Now I'm getting husbandry and chain barning. Again, you can get these upgrades way faster. You really need to understand. It, so guidelines which pretty much you have to look at if you're facing a lot of archers you need to get the second upgrade a lot faster if you're facing a lot of let's say cavalry so knights from the pocket let's say a lot of knights you can delay that plus two because the plus two won't help that much fighting against knights so you really need to you need to understand the situation again what are you actually facing so let's keep playing. Now, you see, I don't have a lot of military. 14 military, I mean, it's not bad. Same number, really, as, like, you can see Lan, you know, uh, Yellow is even on 7, Dranic on 8, so it's not like people don't have or have knights. So now I'm gonna come in with more knights. So now you pretty much see me spam as much as I can. I have 4 stables going, you can also add the 5th one, and I will just try to keep this knight spam up while I'm booming. Also getting heavy plow now. A lot of people like getting heavy plow um a lot faster so just trying to comment everything i can again going as in depth as i can go but um so the upgrade pro priority is my in, in my opinion the eco upgrade is this wheelbarrow bow saw hand cart gold mining upgrade then you get the heavy plow so that's pretty much my upgrade priority so you know just a quick note there so now mr foe is fighting a little bit miscommunication there i didn't know that he's here He's there and he's kind of getting picked off, but... Now, land coming in, he has 20 military, I have 22, but mine are still coming from here. And I'm healing 5 knights, so I'm a little bit out of position, I took... I took not the best fight here, but... I did get cornered a lot, and I couldn't escape really, because it's all walled, as you can see. So I took a pretty bad fight on this side. So not really the best for me, so now you can see... Still just booming out, you know, nothing uncommon. So also there was a there was a pretty much talk when should you add 4 TC. Typically add 4 TC around 28 minutes fastest and then around this 29-30 minute mark. And the, the thing is you don't really need it, but it helps and it also helps if you're getting raided, right? So like these mining camps are very exposed, are very exposed. So a TC here is actually pretty good because now the villagers can move in there if you do get raided. So that is pretty much a note on that one. You, you can also not have them, but typically I do add a 4 TC at least around that 29, 30 minute mark for extra defense. And if you get raided, you can also reboom faster, making those villagers. So now, again, not the best fight, Kira versus Lan. Not much to look at really, just fighting it out. I mean, we, we both suffered a lot of losses, so it's not like anyone came on top really hard or not. And now we will be forced back, because obviously my flank not having enough character and me not having no enough knights. So with the, so I'm definitely trying to go back. You see, I'm just stuck in the, in the palisade, but I did get out at the end, so now I will just regroup on this position. So overall, uh, we pretty much have the same villagers, and... We can also go and do this. So we can look at the economy stats, you know, and you can, we can see the Dark Revise actually has the most economy from us all pockets. And for example, if we, if, we, if we compare our eco, I pretty much have everything 1k more than he does, even though we have the same villagers. And that is just the handcart being done, right? And being, it, it does help. And also the gold mining and all that being done. For example, we can compare me to Janik. You know, I'm a little bit uh, I'm a little bit closer there, but also more food, even 1,000 more food, right? And you see even more gold being collected. So that's just because 
the priority of wheelbarrow and handcart that a lot of people do miss out. And Darkry wise, natural like his economy is looking really amazing as well, so I, I guess we could say even he did something better than me, even though his village account is pretty much the same. So you, what I'm saying there's still room for improvement for everyone. So let's see now. Coming in with the knights. So now I'm just I will just camp again. Don't want to suicide knights. At this point, an option is also to go raid the pocket. As you see, he's coming to raid me, so this is good. Again, the TC does help, right? Because I can run into it now and already coming in with my defensive knights, so that's all good. So, you want to start thinking about clicking up around 32-33 minutes. That is the most common one after spamming a lot of knights in the castle age. Uh, you see I'm even dropping a 5th TC right now, just for protection, so I can garrison wait around in the woodwine. Making some camels to clean up the forward. So now I'm slowly collecting up, you can see the view is stockpiling a lot of resources, the stables are a little bit idle. I'm not making that much knights anymore because I want to click up, because it's already about around the 33 minute mark. And so also people asked, well, how do you transition? So you pretty much start transitioning around that 30 minute mark, as you see I'm now taking a lot of stone, taking the second stone because I'm Saracens and I want to go into those Mamulks, but you still... Uh, like as you see, you need, you need to keep up the knight pressure, you need to make as much knights as you can, because so, 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 otherwise if you would just try to nakedly, you know, without any protection, go up, people would just uh, raid you, like everyone will just come with your army to you and you will lose all your economy, so you need to keep the pressure on. You see, I'm still making knights 30 for military, Every, like you see, everybody's around, nice military counts, so everybody, everybody's making army, knowing they do have to put on some kind of pressure, right? So also one thing to note is, for example, if you're playing a Paladin civilization, so Persians, Flanks, Huns, Teutons, it's a lot easier, you don't need to go on stone that heavily, you can just go into more stables, then transition into Cavaliers and Paladins. I will show a replay of me playing Franks or Persians, whatever, afterwards, and you will see that it is even easier, because you don't need those castles, obviously, and you already have all the upgrades on the Knights, so all you need is pretty much Cavalier and the new Blacksmith upgrades. But other than that, I'm showing this game because it shows Saracens, which is pretty much no economy, and it shows a pretty okay transition into everything. So, at this point, as you see, still coming in with the Knights, trying to do the damage, and just meeting land now. Bro, okay, never mind, he's gonna go past me. Okay, now we're gonna take the fight. And now, I know what the flank is behind, we hit him a lot of times, now I will go to the pocket. As you see, I'm already 20 villager lead almost on him. 120 villagers, so I have a really good economy, and I click up on 23 mi around 23 minutes. So 23, uh, yeah, Thir 33 minutes I click up, sorry, and I will be imperial around 36, 37 minutes, and that's pretty good. I'm still keeping up some knights, and now obviously I will start to switch into those mamulks. So you will see me drop the castle soon, but now I'm going full pocket. As you see, I'm coming in with a lot of knights, and the thing is. What happens is, you force him to defend, right? You force him to hide, though, you force him to bring his army back. So this is really good, because it allows me at home to be untouched. Because either he reacts, and he goes to me, or he comes home, right? But the thing is, like, he has to do that decision now. For example, if he would not now try to reach my base, he would die by then. So he has to go defensive. So again, just putting on the pressure, knowing that we can, because we have the advantage. At, at a disadvantage, I probably wouldn't do that, because it's very risky. But now I will go for the fight, I see his knights, you know, I'm just gonna patrol in. We both have pretty much equal upgrades right now, you can see equal knights. We will go, both go for the fight. And you will see me drop the castle soon as I'm dropping even more farms. 130 villager economy, which is pretty good, pretty monstrous, and now I will take the fight. It, it will be a very close fight, you know, we both had a huge amount of military, but I will come on top. And so now, you won't see me commit, you won't see me go all in, I will pull this army back, you see everything's weak like every knight is almost dead i will bring them all back and i will go back with them to the monk and i will heal them all up so again being efficient because all of these knights will just die in the next 10 seconds right they're all so low just being efficient bringing them back healing them up so now the transition is happening one castle is being dropped i will try to drop the second one asap it was a little bit of a slow transition for me i gotta admit i i did go on stone a little bit too late and i, and I forgot the stone mining upgrade which was the biggest reason for that, but overall it was still pretty good. So we, we will go around that 40 minute mark, then there's not much to watch. Also, um, around 
40 minutes you want to start get out that trade you want to start the building those two markets and start trading you know on the opposite side we had a lot of problems because we actually were losing on this side so it was complicated to get the trade in the corner so we had to go on the bottom one you know just some saying and now here we go i'm bringing everything back i am in the imperial elite manual on the way so what do you know like what do you make with each, each civilization well you, you kind of have to think about it you know like let's say you're a paladin civilization as i already mentioned before then you go paladins you know you're an archer civilization like britons you kind of have to go for those longbowmen you can still go knights like pretty much how you know how you know when to go like cavalry or not is pretty much if the civilization allows for example with chinese even though they don't have paladin you can also go full win cavalry because they do have max upgraded cavalry so you pretty much need to go and study that yourself see which civilization has upgrades to cavalry and the last armor and whatnot and then think about what is that main unit strength i'm not going to go over every civilization here okay so also if i would not have a bloodline civilization by the way it would be pretty much the same stuff there is a video on my youtube where i play britain's pocket it was taken from my stream so if you want to watch how to play britain's pocket with uh, knights again you will I mean, you can watch that. So now I'm getting all the upgrades, right? So at this part, we will stop because this just transitions into Imperial. I will just make Mammy Wooks. You know, I'm already going to help my side. But pretty much, this is the Arabia Pocket Guide. Uh, the Arabia Pocket Guide from start to finish. And now I will just go over some variations in the next screens. So, overall. And afterwards, I, I will go over the questions that you guys ask. So, and you know the ones that I didn't go over yet, I did cover the monastery, the two stable, one stable, when to add knights, when to not add knights. So, again, like, you could think that this build is pretty one-dimensional, but this is pretty much what a lot of, like, pretty much what pro players even do. If you watch, you know, for example, Nations Cups and those, pretty much this build is used as well. It's a little bit maybe changed, more situational, obviously, but... The same guidelines is the same, you add, go for the double stable, 28 up, get the 3 TC running, get the upgrades, all of that, and then you just go into that Imperial. So you can see I'm on 140 villagers, that's gonna be it, I'm not going to be make, uh, making any more. Over the 40 minutes, I'm going for the markets, we will see markets from Mr. Full later on there. So overall, this is it. Also, I will start picking up relics soon, and the game will just transition into a post-Imperial game. So now it's pretty much just, you know, spam units and all that stuff and just play the Imperial game, which we are not here to cover this time. So this is going to be it for this one. So pretty nice build order. If anyone wants the recording of this or whatever, you can ask me if you want to watch more. But overall, I tried to cover everything. Sorry if I missed some parts. And if you don't disagree with what I did at certain points, please write in the comments as well. And we should be turning into the next scene soon. Okay, so welcome to the Persian one, and this one will be a little bit different. The, the build order is exactly the same as you can see. I mean, the only difference is I don't have the 5 on wood, but I am taking the straggler trees. The only reason that happened was because I did push a lot more extra deer, but other than that, not looking at the Dark Age build order, looking at the transition as always, because the build order pretty much is exactly the same. So, let's see, now stable coming out, so does the blacksmith, I did actually mess up a villager here, but again, not what we are looking for. So, castle age is up, 16 minutes, 06, typically the timing is 1620 on the 28 plus 2, so let's see how it goes. So, pretty good castle edge as you can see, but that is just Persian castle edge being a little bit faster. It should be like 10-20 seconds later. So this one I'm talking about, the walling. As you can see, I'm already walling all the front of my base. And just, that is pretty much just to be safe. You know, just to be safe against any kind of feudal aggression from the enemy pocket. And overall, just, it's, it's, it's always good to wall, what I'm trying to say. So, double stable coming out. 5 on gold, you see. I have how much farms? 8 farms right now already in the feudal age. While I'm clicking up to the castle age. So... Let's see how it will go. I did clean up the drush for my flank with the scout, so that's all good. So you see, I click up now. I mean, I'm in the castle age. Bam. 
two knights for each. I do queue up two villagers. Second TC coming down. The third one actually is delayed a little bit, so you can see not having 10 on wood actually delays second to third TC a little bit for me. But that is all good because we will get it down soon. So already first two knights out. Okay, so second TC coming down. Now the third one will be coming down here. Um, I even adding a farm before that. So now I'm waiting for the wheelbarrow food to kick in, and here we go. Now I get the wheelbarrow. Again, 1842 will be the time for that. So around 17 minutes, I try to get it after making two or three villagers. So the second TC is down. I'm a little bit delaying the third one because the Persian TCs are a little bit faster and it's actually hard to keep them up. Other than that, I'm coming in with the six knights again. Six knights, as we saw, same as the last, the last game. I build six knights and then transition into a smooth three TC boom. So wheelbarrow will be done now. And now again, it's pretty much the same deal, all about adding those farms. So I just want to go over the transition and all that in Imperial. With you know, this is a much stronger civilization than the Saracens, obviously. So let's watch it now. I'm just harassing the flank as much as I can. Mr. Full went for one stable, right? He went for one stable, but you can see we have we have absolutely the same villagers, even though he did one stable and already booming, and I did two stable. So again, the two stable does not set you behind in economy on a very like big manner because you still get the three TC running. And what you have to remember, it is impossible to keep three TC running and the stable running pretty much all the time you always have some sort of idle time it's just impossible to do it you will have just like a little bit but still some idle time so you can see now military he has three and i have six so pretty much the double because of the two stable and i'm already booming on three tcs without any problems whatsoever still putting some harassment on the flank i'm trying to get in his economy and will not be successful sadly enough but still Full HP, 6 knights, all good on that part. Mr. Full coming in, not achieving anything with his knights as well. I'm just trying to break in the palisades again. Will kill a knight, I hope. Come on, I didn't get it, no? Feels bad. So overall, just basic stuff. I'm not adding any more knights, because the 6 again is enough. The thing is, the 6 knights is pretty much enough, because nobody will actually be able to deal with that until they get their own army. So still just basic 3TC booming. Already on 56 villagers you can see a pretty good economy already. So I already collecting up to that handcart. Now I get handcart again around 23 minute mark. So you can see like I already have the basics under and now we go for the 2v2 fight and you see I have enough knights to support my flank completely and we can easily go for the 2v2 fight without, you know, me suffering suffering any losses. So you see, I still have the six knights. I haven't lost anything in 91 KDA. The one loss is the scout. So still, try to manage your army. Try not to lose them. That is what is very important. And then you will feel like you have the numbers. So really good economy already. Now again, 24 minutes, dropping two more stable. Again, just trying to get... You can see, like, a lot of things are repeating itself, you know the economy and all that. I pretty much have a pattern that I use and it's kind of working for me, so pretty happy with that. Still, uh, at this point though, I'm not getting any upgrades. Last game I did get them very fast. The reason I'm not getting up any upgrades because I'm literally not facing any army. So now I'm getting at, at them around the 25 minute mark and this is just because I can. That is why I'm getting them now. Already see 72 villagers. And this is, you know, on a pretty good civilization. Versions obviously being a really, really good pocket civilization. Dropping the market now. That is all good. So now we have four stable. Trying to keep all of them working. See one idle. But overall trying to keep them all working. So now it will be the typical uh, stable night spam as we saw the last game. Getting plus two and heavy plow around that 26 minute mark. It truly is all about like keeping the balance and actually booming up as much as you can. Obviously if you're getting harassed, so let's, let's say both enemies come to you, then you want to pretty much even idle your TCs if you have to, to go for a more, more defensive approach. Okay, so now you see 
he, my flank is Xing that he needs knights. I'm bringing my knights there. We're still harassing him and I doing him on this side. So now you can see I have those four stables working. You can also add a fifth one. And I'm dropping the 40s here on that 28 minute mark this time. A little bit faster again because I can. And the reason I'm adding to safe if we get the gold, safe if we get the stone, safe if we get the wood. Just for extra protection. Getting the forging upgrade now, so I pretty much have my knights already maxed out on the defensive upgrades. So, again, it's like, there was somebody who asked, when do you stop adding knights, when do you pretty much build knights? You want to build knights and villagers as, you know, when you can. For example, now you can see I'm already collecting a lot of food, so I will start to build that, that monastery and university soon, so I can click up. And still, I'm keeping the knight protection, as you see, more knights are coming in. And we take another fight, which is really good for us. You see, all my knights are pretty much full HP, so I'm not really even building a monastery to make a monk, because be, because I'm facing double knights, so there's no arrows, there's no poke, you know, no harassment, so I'm really not forced to go for that monk to heal me up after taking a lot of arrow fire. So now here we go, University Monastery being dropped, even having some idle time. But overall, you can see 130 population on 30 minutes is pretty, pretty nice. Even villager-wise, you can see I'm on that 100 mark and nobody else is there yet. So now we go for the fight again. I'm taking it. My flank is saying me not to take it, so I do go back at the end. And now I will click up on that 30 minute mark. So this is a lot easier, a lot faster uptime click, just because of the advantage of the civilization. But you did see that you can even do that. You know, with the Saracens, obviously it was later, but it is still possible. So we still have me, you know, going for those knights. I'm still trying to keep right. So I, I did idle the stables, obviously, a little bit to quick up, but you can see everything's working again. All the stables are being done. So pretty much you idle your stables for a few minutes because you already have, like, such a strong economy. It is quite easy to keep it working. So one second now. I will need to go. So, sorry about that. So that is pretty, very good. And now you, I won't, again, go really far into this. But we'll just show you the basics. So now you just get up. You can add even more stables. But now I'm, I would, I'm just keeping on the four. And then you just go into the Cavalier and Paladin. And that is pretty much it. Pretty straightforward again. A lot better with the Persians obviously. Because they have the Paladin. So that is it for this one. Okay. So the last one. The last one I will actually cover. It will be the Franks one. And the reason I covered this. Because again it was quite an interesting interesting deal with you know walling and then transitioning into paladins and we already covered persian i know these are like good economy civilizations but again the build was pretty much showcased with saracens everything else is you know just tweaking and the situation pretty much how it's supposed to look like so again you see five here four here could have been five but again i had deer so i'm kind of conserving a little bit on that so now i bring it villager forward and you can see already this is walled i'm gonna barrack here then stable here to create a little bit of wall off as well We'll probably wall that if I remember. So pretty much again, quite similar things. You can see the flanks battling it out here with the rush, and there was like actually a lot of lag in this game, which was quite unfortunate. So I am Franks against Britons in this one, and I do have a Briton pocket as a video on my YouTube if you guys want to see that. And Britain is actually quite a good pocket as well. People think, oh Britons, you have to go archers, but. They have pretty good all-in castle age night push as well. Just because of the cheap TCs, their economy is pretty, pretty nice. And you can get a lot of knights really fast. Now Feudal Age coming. I'm bringing two voters. You can see that distance is very far, right? And I'm still doing that just to get, you know, to stable forward. So I can reinforce my flank faster. And to trade with a wall off. So, like, for example, if you, your units come, you know, I see them with the buildings. And I do have a little bit of war off, a worn off. So I can react properly or accordingly. I, I, I don't know how you want to put it. Okay, so stable blacksmith coming down now. There we go. You can see I'm bringing five on gold as always. Bam, and I click up. Here we go. 1630, pretty much basic uptime. I did have some idle time. You can see Belgium is a little bit out of me, but. 
There's always idle time with lag. I mean, not always, but you know what I mean. A few seconds is not a big, de a big deal overall. So you can see now we have five here, four here, one, two on the stragglers. Just adding the farms now slowly, getting double bedax. Again, want to go pretty heavy, you know, double stable coming down. So to be efficient with these three villagers, I will eat the deer. So when I go to the TC, I do have that 35 food. Which will in result give me a nice economy boost. Which is obviously nice. So overall, not a lot of stuff happening again. Just want to showcase the early mid castle age. Might even show the Imperial. Because that, like you will see a lot of again pretty much all in Castle Age Knights. Okay, so now bringing down 200s with the field, as I said, trying to be efficient. Put a house here. I think I built another one. Okay, not. Just gonna go get the deer here. You can see the berries will almost run out pretty much when I'm cast away, which almost always happens. And it's really nice because then you can immediately use the four villagers from the berries to build a town center. So you can see I'm getting up quite a big economy, almost 600 food, 400, 400 gold, 400 wood. I'm gonna drop a TC there. And Zay tried to weigh my villa, I had a wall villager here, I reacted nicely, going to save that. So, for uh, two knights in each stable getting popped up. I actually... Okay, yeah, so he's gonna bring that and go back, never mind. So, I didn't get Bolso again. Skipping the Bolso, as always. And I'm just waiting for the wood now to get the TC up here. With the berry wheels, because they just ran out, standing with them like five seconds. Not a big deal. So you can see now we have what? I have eight farms. So pretty much what you have when I have is like these eight, nine farms. When you get to the castle age. And then, and then you pretty much can add the third TC pretty fast. So you can see I'm already coming in here with three knights chasing down Zade's one. Coming in with three more, four more. So I pretty much have military wise six knights again. One scout as always. Zade went for one stable. Already 3 TC down for him, so. Now, like, like, see, like, see, now I have to, like, pretty much double the knights almost he has, so I can definitely scare him off. Thus, I can defend my flank. Thus, I can give him time to actually boom up to the castle age. Right, so again, double stable. The advantage it does provide is you can, you know, go for the fight. For example, if, if, if I, we, I would have two flanks fighting it out, let's say, I don't know, in the middle of the map, like here or something. I would come in with six knights a lot faster than he comes in with six knights, so that would allow me to win the fight. Again, why double stable is more efficient, unless you're actually pre-made. Only reason I would go one stable is if, it's, if I'm pre-made and we are like full team wall. Then you can choose when to fight. So now you can see I'm coming in with my five knights, I actually did lose one here, which was quite bad. But happens. So now still five knights. I think I already got Wheelbarrow, let me check actually, might miss that. Yeah, I already got Wheelbarrow. I think I got it after like 2 or 3 villagers. So just 3 TC booming right now, 41 villager, pretty good stuff. You can see that Zade, since he went 3 TC, one stable, is way ahead of me. But military wise, I'm way ahead and you can see we're taking the fight really nicely, Zade's knights are out of position. So overall, you can see again, the knights bring in an advantage overall in army count. And army is very important, because army can do a lot of damage. Even though I'm like behind in villagers, you have army, it's a really nice position. Now still, you see, he, he can't fight. He can't high ground, and I also have two more nice than he does. So definitely he cannot fight. So now he's only now getting wheelbarrow. So if you look at the economy, let's look at the economy. Obviously he has more villagers. If you look at the economy, we, we can see that he's, you know, barely ahead of me. Like 400, barely 200, so it's not like the end of the world. Like 600 resources head, you know, he's not like oh, already a thousand head, so obviously he will be at since he has the villager number. But he's still still one stable, right? Because he, he, he needs to keep the eco up, so it's hard for him to actually produce army on that quantity. So now you can see I'm getting both so around that 22 minute mark, I delayed it a little bit. And still, you can see we're putting pressure on him and scaring him off just because he doesn't have more nice than me. It's all still booming 54 villagers now. Catched up as you can see a little bit to him. Okay. So let's see now. 
you can see now my guy's already up right because he didn't have like any pressure to deal with because i pretty much killed all the knights here and saved him again just gives a little bit more breathing room obviously this guy's already up the uh, opponent flank so that's pretty good for him but for example let's say i, I would go like one stable knight and Z Z Z goes two stable and my flank's already losing and then he just gets destroyed and it doesn't matter if i have you know three five then Vildra lead, I'm still gonna go, going to get wrecked 1v2. Alright, so you have to think about a big picture, not yourself. One way that is. Okay. So you can see, still booming around. I think I'm gonna get handcart soon. Around the 24 minute mark, a little bit later than in the, in the Chinese game, like one minute later. But still, you kinda wanna get it before 25 minutes. Yes, you actually did not even get it. Just queued up more knights. Just because they realized they have to help him. So you can see, you know, there's always like situations you have to think about. I, I realized that, you know, I am a little bit behind Zade in the economy just because of the score. So I knew I had to go a little bit more, more nights. So I get hand card around that 25 minute mark, but I have already a little bit more nights out. I already have, you know, night, uh, nine, uh, 11 nights in the play. So I know that we can go for the fight a little bit better. So now I will regroup with him, with all my knights. You can see I'm still spamming, so I'm actually going for quite, you know, quite a big number of knights this game compared to other games. One misplay I did, I don't know why I was getting a lot of stone. I have no idea why. <laughs> so now only now getting scale burning because again, rem remember I talked about unless you're fighting a lot of archers really fast, you don't need that scale burning. You saw me get it in the Chinese game because we were putting pressure, a lot of crossbows in the back. But now in the Frank game, you see, I, I wasn't fighting anything except Zade's knights. Because the flank didn't have any army, meaning Grey didn't have any archers. So I skipped the scale burning and went for more numbers than upgrades. So I'm getting it on me now because I know he's in Castle Age. So I know I'll be facing crossbows or cavalry archers or, you know, any other type of archery in it. So you have to like think about what will happen in the future. Okay, so now X. So we can like, take position on the high ground. Here we go, and he does have a nice number of knights, right? I mean, crossbow. But I'm definitely chasing it off and wanting to go for the fight. I'm gonna back off a little bit. So I'm on 13, he's on 17, so he has way more, uh, way more numbers, right? And, and you will see now it will be quite a disaster, because again... We were, we were completely out of position here. Like, just because of And he should have walled. This was his misplay, he didn't wall this up. Maybe he did? Oh, don't tell me he walled. Yeah, I see, that, that was his fault totally. Because if he would have walled, and I would have understood what's actually going on, because my, 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 my reaction time really sucked. I mean, it's both of our both of our faults, I'm not saying it's his fault. It's my fault as well for not reacting accordingly, but you can see now, a lot of aggression happening, you know, knights everywhere, and... Now I'm trying to keep up the pressure. I already have plus two, so now I'm just pretty much going all in nights. So, again, 96 pop around that 27, 28 minute mark. So you won't have that 100. You can see Zed has 110. So he's having a pretty good game so far. Compared to me. Okay, now I'm getting husband reforging so I can reinforce the knights faster. Now we go for the fight because I have to go for the fight. Because my, my guy's getting completely under attack. Bringing in more knights from Zayd, I'm also bringing in more from my stable. So now it's all all out brawl, you know, just spamming knights at, at each other like crazy. So I just want I, I just want to show with this one, you know, how much you can mess up and how much it will cost. You know, he lost a lot of, a lot of villagers, a lot of idle time there, just so we can force them, them both back. So now I'm dropping the forward monastery to heal up my knights. You can see it's a lot later because again, there's no archers. Means there are no immediate poke. Means you're not you're not going to get your knights really well really fast. So now after we tank the first big fight of the game, only now I'm actually getting monastery down because my knights are quite well. So I'm on 92 villagers, dead on 93. So you can see I, I catched up on economy. I'm still behind in military by 10, which is obviously not good, but I at least catched up in the economy. Okay, so you will see now. That we will just slowly push it out. I'm already spamming knights all across the place. Pretty much have, as always, four stable. You can go for five, it's definitely fine if you can keep it up. So four stable out.
now again just trying to coordinate when we're flying going together so like well, if we split we're a lot weaker so might as well just go together with him because obviously i'm the faster one so i can maneuver if needed but he can't because he's on crossbows Now we go through some sniping, I go in front to take the damage, then immediately back off, again trying not to overextend. So I pretty much selected all my weak, you can see all of these are full HP almost. I selected all of my weak knights to bring back and heal with the monk. And the, uh, the strong ones are already in front, you know, reinforcements coming, all that stuff. So you can see Zade is actually forwarding me. I don't know where his army is though. Where is his army? Oh, he's here, okay. So, he's in, oh, so w let's check the economy. He's gonna click up before me, but I'm going to follow soon, so... Let's actually look at the economy. So you can see that we're actually pretty close. Like, I have 700 more food, he has 400 more gold. You know, he has a little bit more wood, I have a little bit more stone. So, let's say we're neck to neck. I, I want two, two stable, he went one stable. He has economy advantage with Britons because of cheap DCs. I have, you know, the... Pretty heavy plowing horse cover. So bolt, you know, with some kind of eco upgrades. And you can see that eco, uh, the economy wise, pretty much both of us weren't touched the whole game, you, you could say that. And we do have uh, do have pretty much the same economy. So you can see that it's not like this too stable, this falls behind an economy, you just have to do it correctly. So now he's bringing out a lot of knights, I have 35 as 31, so since he's already up, he stopped knight production, I didn't. And now I'm abusing the market and clicking up a little bit faster than usual, like one minute faster. And the reason I do that is just because I see that we cannot act, like we, we literally cannot push. That's pretty much the reason I went for the up a little bit faster. I do have also 4 TCs, as I already said, dropping that 4 TC around 29-30 minutes is completely fine. Just pretty much dropped it on the gold for secure, security. The problem was, the biggest issue for me, I didn't spot this forward. Which is obviously a big misplay. But you can see I'm spamming a lot of knights. I'm going crazy. I know I have cavalry and paladin. So you can see already 40 knights. You know, pretty big army. And now you will see me just go all over the place and raid as much as I can. You see, like, all stables are... Not all, but you know what I mean. Theoretically, in my head, all of them are working. I do not have the best eco balance. A little bit more wood, but you can already see I'm just dropping outposts. I'm trying to find my third gold. It took me, it took me a while to find that, but... You can see I'm adding a lot of farms to balance it out a little bit. So still, still, I'm, I'm just stand, standing with the 50 knights here, right? And now, at and, and this point, obviously, I should have went a little bit faster for the attack. But the thing is, we both were going up. So at, at my head, I was like, you know, let's go up, wait for the upgrades. But then I realized that he's Britons and he might go Halberdier. So I had to hit him before he actually gets out the Imperial Army. Again, this was a problem that I didn't spot this fast enough. But I still have like 51 army already. So that's a lot of knights that will be cavalry soon. So again, that 35, 36 minute Imperial. This, this time is a little bit closer to the 35 mark. 35 one mark, but that's completely fine. Again, 123 villagers. You can see Belgium is 126. Zaid is almost 120 himself, and the white guy is 113. So everybody's like 110 at least for the pocket, which is completely understandable. So now I will go entirely in his base, and there's no way he can stop it. He has a huge knight army, we will go for like a really huge fight. I don't even remember who won that one, but the point is, I'm, I'm, I'm like just keeping the pressure on him like crazy. I'm forcing him back as well. You will see, you will go back immediately, I think. Yeah, I see he's going back. Like there's no way he can allow this rampage, I will just kill all his economy. So okay, we're played burning incoming. I have a really good eco, 123 builds, just amazing. 61 knights, so I still have another army here and we can fight against the flank, which I think I will do now. So I'm pretty much all over the pocket, which means I'm dealing with my guy. Obviously this was a big problem, which I didn't realize fast enough. In my head, I was thinking I'm totally fine. Which is not ideal. So now I go back because I see his army, he does have the cavalry since he went up, so now I'm just waiting for, the, for to even out the upgrades. So Bojum actually spot this and he dealt with it, I mean, not ideal, but you, you can see, 64 knights, I have a huge army going there, not a huge army here waiting for the cavalry, so I'm just trying to hit everyone at the same time, trying to destroy everyone at the same time. Again, this was a big problem for me, I didn't react accordingly, I should have dropped the castle there, and that would have been fine. But now I'm just killing the flank. So now I will regroup this army with this army, 
And you will see, I'm, I'm already getting fouled and immediately once Calvary is done, not immediately but like one minute after, I get fouled and just because I have this huge 130 villager economy, 40 minute paladin, good stuff. So at this point, all, all that happened was we just traded with paladin and everything and killed. So what I'm trying to say is again, like the situation where we, I pretty much went for more knights instead of the upgrades. So you have to think, I, I knew I'm not quite facing any archers because a great guy went for a faster uptime. So I knew I have time to mess up knights, get my economy up and only then get the plus one, the plus two and all of that stuff, right? Instead of going for it immediately as you saw the last game, for example, the Chinese one. So again, showcasing, you know, pretty much everything starting out from the castle age to how to get the upgrades, when to click up, and how it's pretty much like a pattern. Like, it's pretty much in your head, set one build order, which changes a little bit, depending on the situation. So that will be the Frank one. Okay, guys, so this one will be a Chinese one, where I actually went up on 29, because I had a, had a really good Chinese start, and typically you can go up on 29, you can see my time is still reasonably okay. Pretty much the same as Eclipse, which is the Viking pocket on the opposite side. So I did push deer, and my economy is going to be pretty good, and I just want to showcase how it will play out. So again, 5 here on wood, 4 here... I think I added this one on wood as well later on, I just walled up. And you can already see that in this game also, I did wall up the front, wall this side, I will wall that later on with stables and walled here as well. So again, quite important to wall, and not a lot of farms because I did push the deer, but that's totally fine. So let's see how it will play out. So this guy will build a stable, then I will bring another one to build a blacksmith. I see I'm bringing two more guys over to build the stuff I need. So, um, the reason I didn't show the Dark Age because the build order on the base is pretty much the same as the Saracen one. And again, we are just looking at the Castle Edge more than anything. Just harassing a little bit with my flank, not a lot of stuff happening there. So you can see it's gonna be 5, like it would be 10 on wood, but these guys are building, so you can see I'm on a lot of straggler trees actually. Because I know I will have enough to click up. And I will go for horse core and then go for more farms. Okay, here we go. Stable is down. I'm gonna wall it up, then double stable on here as always. So again on a normal basis the builder is pretty fine. Like typically if I would not have pushed here, I would have be on zero wood because I would have all, all the farms down already. You can see my uptime is still pretty nice, 1623. That's because of the good Chinese start. Getting double with axe now. You can see I'm already on Seven farms. Typically, I would already be on nine at this point, but again, I did push the deer. So I see that Eclipse's scout is near, so I wall in my villager because otherwise he just comes in with a scout and kills my vill and I lose the stable. So you have to be very of that of those things. And now this villager is gonna be idle. I would uh, like he literally has my villager pinned him, and my scout is you know on the opposite side of the map, so I'm not gonna bring that one back. So you will see this villager actually be here idle pretty much till the castle age. Which is not ideal, but what happens, happens. So, you can see 2 for 6 here, we have 5 here, so 11, and then 5 on gold, 4 on berries, and the rest on farms. A little bit, you know, different build, one more on wood, but typically that guy, guy, guy would be on straggler anyway. So, 9 farms now. Pretty nice economy going into this, and I'm still scared by the way, this count is not here, but I still think it is, so I was still paranoid, and I, wait, I waited for one night to come out. Which is funny, but happens. So let's see how again they play out the castle age. So like, Barry is done pretty much at the exact time he hit castle age. So those four villagers pretty much are meant for the TC. So second TC coming down and third one will come down here in the next seconds. Here we go. So as always, you know, TC is getting dropped. Getting out those knights, already have one knight, two knight, three knight, four knights coming in. You know, one more queued up, it's going to be this another one queued up in the next seconds, here we go. Another one queued up, so again, pretty classic, the early castle edge start. So six knights, and triple TC down. Pretty easy, right? Obviously China does have some kind of eco bonus, but pretty much achievable with any civilization. With, with most civs you might have to skip the third TC for like half a minute 
So now coming with the Knights, uh, the Vikings, as you see, is going double stable as well. So you will have a number of Knights as well. Now I'm collecting all of mine. It does take time for them all six to be together, which sometimes is, is an issue. I did get wheelbarrows as well, so no ball saw yet. Again, going for skipping the ball saw, you know, to get wheelbarrow, which is a pretty nice choice because then you have more food income. The ball saw kind of just gives you like extra wood. Okay, so I actually overstepped here a little bit. As you see, my two of my knights are pretty much one HP right now. I'm immediately bringing them back and realizing I cannot fight this, so my flank will actually die. This was a pretty rough fight for us, but there was no way I can actually help him because he was too deep. So at this point, right, you have to read the situation. Even though your flank's gonna be mad, you cannot go for the suicide play because I, if I go in there, right? I mean, obviously I misplayed a little bit because my knights were out of position here and, and I didn't want to that, that, like go past the TC. But what I mean is, if I would have stayed, I would have lost, you know, these two, low HP knights, maybe even one more knight, and you know, probably green at the end would have picked me up anyway. Again, it's hard to read these situations if you see, like, I didn't know that my guy was there at the end. And I didn't play that correctly as well, but at the end I just chose the safest play and went back with my weak, weak, weak knights. So you can see I'm already bringing these back. And even though I'm going to be pretty much only on 4 knights right now instead of 6, it's better to bring these ones back than just lose them for no reason. So you can see 41 villager already, booming pretty nicely, dropping a lot of farms. I'm keeping 3 on gold, you don't really need more, you can also keep 2, but like un until you start spamming knights out. So now we go full defensive. I'm already bringing my four knights and the scout back. These two already are coming here. Now getting both off with 20, 20 minutes, 21 minutes. You, you'll actually see me go for quite a fast monastery. I mean, not a fast one, but like I remember one of you asked, when do you go for a monastery? And in this case, I would drop it reasonably fast, just to heal up the knights. So you can see the low HP knights are already in position. And again, I'm playing on four knights, getting scale burning now, 21 minutes. It's it, 21, 22 is pretty standard time to get plus one. We're going for a typical build. And you can see Matt is playing gods and he, he already has even more villagers. And he did go for one stable though. So he does have a little bit better economy. Okay, here we go. The plus one is done. And you already see I have, I have quite a bunch of wood. So the monastery gets dropped down at 22, 20. So that's pretty much just because we are raiding against crossbows and I need to heal up my stuff if I can. You can see 53 villagers booming out pretty nicely, not adding any more army, just living all what I can right now because like unless you really need to, you don't really need to add knights if you're if you're keeping up the pressure because if they come for a fight you can just go back if needed. So here we go, this is up, gonna be one monk out, here we go. Now I'm gonna get hand card around 23 minutes, you get 23, 24, you can see Bolt is also getting it. He's playing as the China pocket as well. Yeah, he's also adding the third stable, so pretty good stuff. Okay. Still smacking down. The archery, not really doing that much. I mean, now I have pretty much six knights in position, you know, also two being healed. That will get healed up soon. Now, now I'm actually you know, starting to add more knights. You can see, like, I'm just... I have the economy. The ha like, once hand card is done, obviously there are always exceptions, but if everything's going smooth, once hand card is done at that 23 minute mark, you get the gold mining, blood wines, and you just start popping out a lot of knights. Because you pretty much don't need any eco upgrades at all yet. I mean, anymore. So it's all about keeping three TCs running and... Pretty much keeping the stables running. So you can see now I'm starting to add more knights. Already on 14 military, which is pretty good. Haven't lost anything at all, so. Gonna kill these up, then you know, bring even those forward. And now I'm just pretty much spamming out knights when I can. So you can see 25 minutes, I have 70 pop. I mean, I have almost 90 population. So as I said, the guideline is pretty much 24 minutes, 70 pop, and 27, 28 minutes, 100 pop. So let's see if I can actually achieve that this game. Again, you see I go back, don't have to go suicide with your knights. It's all about dancing around the wedding, wedding the crossbows poke. Now X, and I'm gonna move in front, and we're gonna have the high ground so they can't fight. Getting plus 2 now with 26 minutes as well. 
because you know we were going a little bit more aggressive. I actually overstepped there a little bit once the week night, but it wasn't the end of the world. I'm just dancing around because I don't want to go. I really didn't want to fight this, but since my flank actually went in and we had more crossbows, I actually went for a fight. And at this point, I know I'm gonna lose all my knights. A little bit idle stuff there, but that's fine. So you can see, 27 minutes. 27 minutes, 98 pop Matthew, 94 pop me, 95 pop Fusion Bolt, 92 Echo. So you can see everybody's around that 90, 95 population. That is pretty much the guideline you are looking for. Obviously, you can always do it better and better. So now we actually did lose that fight because Red uh, Green had, you know, stables near, so he's actually able to pop out more nice than me, and I already. Went back here and re regroup, knowing there's no point for me to fight that. So all of these, I think all of these are gonna go back and heal. So now I'm adding, you know, four stables, 27 minutes, starting to spam out those knights. Still three DC working, you know, I'm just popping around everything I can, and booming up slowly. So you can see there's like n there's like no magic anything here. 28 minutes getting gold shot, you can see already getting that as well. So you can see now it's you know just four stables spamming knights. One idle villager chilling. Nothing that complex. And the good thing is you see, like my guy's walled. You know, I'm partially walled, so if they come here, I have the TC here, close and then they can, re and can react, pull this goes back, pull this back. It's like a pretty walled base, you know. He he can't just run in here from the front and kill me, you know, because then I will react, I will see and just wall it up. So now I'm coming coming with a lot of knights and I'm going full on raid him. As always, about that 28-29 minutes, I just like start spamming a lot of knights everywhere. You can see already 33 military for me. You know, I'm all over the place, spamming the knights, going aggressive oh, to my guy. He's killing my guy, my flank in the meantime, but he's losing a lot of economy in return in his base. And a heavy pull now with that 29 minute mark. So pretty much the standard build I do. Already 100 villager mark and about before 30 minutes already 100 villagers. Now it's all about spamming knights, keeping up the pressure and then clicking up around that 32-33 minute mark. Okay, you see, just harassing him like crazy. Still adding a lot of farms, I don't even know how much I have. Yeah, 40 farmers, that's totally normal. So now I need to add, add the university, get the market down if I need to abuse it a little bit and just go all in. So you can see I have knights here, a little bit misused, because I was confused that how my flanks going to be under attack in the front, so I was just patrolling them. You can see I have knights here, I have knights on the pocket, so I'm just trying to keep everyone busy at the same time. So, yeah, that is what you want to do. You, the thing is, by doing this, I'm getting ahead. Like, you can see I already have just a little weed. Just a little bit. Six wood weed, seven wood weed, but still, it's a weed. Nevertheless, I'm, you know, keep keeping the pressure at him, so not getting harassed at home. Now we're going for a good fight as well, and Green picking up his knights. So what you, see, you can see I'm still spamming knights like crazy, you know. All the four stables are working, constantly spamming knights all over the place. Still finding it out here, you see, like, still idling him. Three, three knights, you know, it's, it's idling pretty much one TC fully, you know, all of these kind of messy. So again, even though we're trading army because of that, you're getting a nice economy weed. So now you can see I'm already collecting up slowly. I'm not like spamming those knights that crazy. I still have some queued up in the stable, but you know now just taking a little break. I idling for like pretty much with this economy, the good thing is you, you pretty much have to idle for about a minute, if not even less, and you can already see I have an eco. I, I still have a huge number of army, 40 knights. You know, I pretty much lost, you can see 20 already, so. Pretty much made about 60 nights right now, and I'm just ready to go. So now we'll just go in the... Yeah, I'm trying to get in the economy with the flank. This is actually pretty pretty sad time, because now the Vikings, the Vikings started the sling, and this game went on for like half an hour. But I just want to showcase the villager number around... I'm pretty much around that 120 mark already. Still making villagers. You can see, 35 minute Imperial for me, 35 minute Imperial for Usain Bolt, so... Again, going for the, around that 35-36 minute imperial, as always. And this is pretty much the standard thing I try to do every game I can. Okay. So I will just go up make cavalry, heavy camo. You know, I'm already taking stone. Somewhere-ish, maybe. Maybe I'm lying. Yeah, you see, I'm already taking stone. So, you know, 
preparing for the wave game Chuko News and the Rams and whatnot, so that's all fine as well. So overall, like I, I know that I have Max already the Cavalier, so I'm happy, you know, just spamming knights because I know I will upgrade them to Cavalier anyway. Bring in more villagers to get some forward building, some market and all that stuff. You might be being harassed by the blue here a little bit. Overall, you see it's like a pretty steady game, 120 bills, Make spamming knights, killing stuff. So that's gonna be it for the Chinese one. Again, I just wanted to showcase the castle age. Like that again, like the timings are pretty much there, and you want like what numbers you want to have, and that you do want to wall if you can. Like I had pretty easy walls, you know, wall the front here, wall this. I, I was pretty much secure till this area, which is already quite a big deal. Obviously, you can wall everything. I could have walled this and this, but the reason you want to go for the front wall is, you know, so you can react if army comes down from the left, left for example, or from the back. So that's gonna be it for the China one. So let me just pause it here, and so yeah, that was the one. And I just wanted to showcase again, you know, the clean build order, the transitions, the timings, how it kind of all adds up, and how smooth it is if you do it correctly. Okay, so hey guys, the last part will be the community questions. I made a Reddit post asking ask questions what you want me to cover in the arabia guide so here it is and i'm just gonna go over them obviously i already covered some of them in the clips but i would just go like a tldr over in the reddit page as well so jupas videos seem to just a standard play make few nights and then boom off 3tc again covered that in the video 27 plus 2 seems to be the standard um i I already said that again in the video that 28 is a lot better because you have a lot better economy and the 20 seconds won't be game deciding. How important is always counting as pocket? So the thing is, um, you don't really need to push the deer. If you like, the, if you go 10 on wood, so add the last two guys from the dark age on wood, you have 10 on wood. You pretty much can afford seven, eight farms and then afford a stable blacksmith once you actually get. To the uh, feed wage so again you can go for, to scout the pocket um situations where i go and scout the pocket immediately is if i suspect he might be forwarding or if we have aztecs in the enemy team so i want to know if aztec is my pocket or for example if i want to know if it's korean and if he might forward and stuff like that if you're like walling up really heavily then you can maybe push there and not worry about getting forwarded so much and what you say, only time I won't be pushing there is when someone needs my scout, it's placed out too greedy. Yeah, it's definitely not too greedy. I try to push at least two deer almost all the time because you pretty much want to push the deer till eight, nine minutes anyway. And then you want like just push like let's say two deer and then go scout the pocket so you're not too late. When should you be getting the armor upgrades? So as I said, if you're facing archers and getting, on 20, uh, getting the plus one on 21 minute, 20 minutes even is totally fine. And if you're not facing a lot of archers, you can delay that to pretty much when you need it. So when you actually are facing archers. Because knights versus knights to plus one is not that beneficial. You can pretty much stat more knights and try to keep a smoother economy going. So um, the straight mini boom style after the first few knights, again, covered in the video. Would you ever go for the monks on the offense? And if so, then what circumstances? So if I'm playing Aztec Pocket, I might go for forward monks. But it's very risky. It's just, like again, you need coordination. So at lower EO, especially, wouldn't recommend that. You would just end up being one v, uh, being in a one v two or one v three situation. Rather, just wall up in stone walls and boom. Uh, when would you ever add more TCs to the standard tree? Cover that in the Saracen one. How do you forget? <laughs> okay. Um. So one v one is a little bit different. I'm not going to cover 1v1. So my question would be in which cases you would consider doing the armor upgrades reg regarding the expected amount of produced knights. Is it worth to idle your stable and TC for 30 seconds when you get in return tier plus two armor and maybe abuse it? So it definitely like there are definitely situations situations where you want to do that. Where it's understandable if your flanks under a lot of harassment or the enemy flank and pocket is going to you. Right? But again, it really depends on the situation. I'm not a fan of getting the plus two really fast because in the long run it will set you behind an economy. But if you know that you will need to fight two people, 
I, I what I would do is just stay on two TCs, get wheelbarrow, and then get plus one and plus two armor as fast as possible. When do you not make it knight's pocket? Never. When do you decide between one or two stables? Again, only reason I would go one stable if I'm on team speak and I'm pretty much full team wall. <laughs> oh man, okay, so Nanashi, well man, what's up? And so let's see what are we were saying here. Um Where should I be when? What does pocket look like at minute 17, 22, and 28? So at minute 17, pretty much you want to have like DCs getting built up the second and, th and then the third one. So we starting to build up already, you know, four knights queued up, then plus two, so the typical six knights. And um, 22, again, I use the guidelines 24 minutes, 70 pop, 28 minutes, you would say around 100 pop already, pretty much, let's say 100 pop on 28 minutes. Early castles, so let's say a pocket, they made two stables, four, six knights. Where should they be? Again, you need to coordinate with your flank. My flank is on the fence. If your flank is on the fence, you can't just hang around his base for a little bit. But again, you want to have at least some kind of a wall off or a warning in case the enemy pocket goes to you. If your flank is on the fence, obviously you just go to him and try to mirror it up. Like you, you pretty much want to be hanging around him and coordinating with him. My flank is safe but hurt by a rush. So, for example, if your flank is getting tower rushed or like really crazy forwarded with a lot of spears and skirmishers and stuff, you can try to go hit him at home because he might not have any army at home. When should they focus on big offensive? When should they focus on booming? So once you're actually at that 27, 28 mark, when you start to have around 80, 70 villagers, you can start to harass the pocket a lot more. Before that, I wouldn't really go too heavy on the pocket you might send you know three four knights for raiding but that's pretty much just try to pick up the villagers because what can happen if you send all your army and then you get outmaneuvered so let's say the enemy flank and enemy pocket comes and your flank is 1v2 so he will lose all of his army and your army will be out of position as well so what ends up doing you both of you will just lose their armies single-handedly and you will just fall behind okay let's see a lot of players my skill will spend too long doing one or another which causes us to lose the game in early, in early Imperial either because we let the flank die and the team lost the map control we went too aggressive and now we are castle versus Imperial camels. So again, around that 27, 28 you want to start spamming out those knights to the pocket. So in case, let's see, let's say he clicks up 27 minutes which is pretty fast. He, can, he doesn't have any eco, he cannot keep the army and he will just die versus your mass castle edge knights. It doesn't matter if he gets to the little armor upgrade, he would just die because of the mass. If I'm not playing a seal with great cavalry, when should I stop making knights? I've been told in Team Arabia by higher rated players that I should make a few knights even if I'm not a seal with bloodlines or paladins. You still go all in Castle Edge knights on those on that 27, 28 minute mark, and then you pretty much want to click around that 20, 31, 32, and then transition. Until then, you want to keep knight production. Even if you're, for example, knights without bloodlines against knights with bloodlines. Because in Castle Age, every civilization except Malayans, I don't really care about expansions this much, and I didn't cover them that much in the guide. But what I mean is, pretty much every civilization, only thing they lack is bloodlines. And that is fine. You can live without having bloodlines. How to really push and raid efficiently as a 700 noob? I might have six knights, I might get upgraded, but often I don't know when to take fights. Some tree spears and garrison TC is enough to make me run away when I should take a fight. When a guy has three TCs, what do you do then? When you have plus two, then you want to go for like a full heavy raid. If you have only plus one or no armor at all, you want to avoid TCs, you know, and go for the villagers that are like exposed on a lumber camp and stuff like that. Army composition for heavy paladin. What do you do? What do you what to do when your job becomes to carry mostly the flank? You pretty much go all in paladin, you want to set up trade before 37 38 minutes because you know you will pretty much try to spam as much as possible and then you want to add halberdiers or hand cannoneers or you know something depending on the situation but the thing is most paladin civilizations do have access to halberdiers so that usually is a really good way to actually try and to keep the pressure on on defensive side you know you can spam a lot of halberdier and just try to deal with what you can also adding siege ram or some kind of siege versus maybe mass arbalist might help if one or two stable knights camel rushing went to get plus one, plus two, and bloodlines. Again, it depends if you're facing a lot of crossbow, facing a lot of knights, or facing both. If you're facing both, then 
Try to get plus one in bloodlines as fast as possible around that 22, 23 mark should have built. 24 mark, get the plus two, and then you should be okay. If really needed, obviously you can get everything till 21, 22 minutes, but the economy will be very bad. What to do with melee? You pretty much just go, again, really heavy in tonight. And once you actually start to fall behind because you don't have the plus two armor, you might want to switch into elephants. I mean, melee is just complicated. In high elo, you will probably see melee forwarding all the time. When do you add more stables? How many can you make before you're delaying Imperial too much? Again, you're not truly delaying Imperial, you're just booming up. And you have if you have army, you're not truly delaying anything. Because you have army. So the ideal time to click Imperial is around that 32, 33, 34 minute mark. When you have around 50 to 70 knights. How to deal with the enemy forwards, forward or smush on, and how when to do this herself. Only reason you could ever forward with monks is if you're Aztecs. How to counter that? Ask help from your flank if he has crossbows and go pretty much full white cab and making no defense. When do you prioritize the Imperial Age upgrade over making army? Pretty much never, because if you're behind, all in Castle Age Knights is the only way you can come back. And if you're, you're ahead, all in Castle Age Knights will just finish off your opponent. I've been wrecked by pocket scouts before, is that even remotely viable? Yes it is, with pretty much, you could say, almost every sieve, but... Usually it's getting done, um, usually it's getting done by Hans Mongols, you know, somebody that has good scout rush. But I wouldn't do it unless you have, again, a co like coordination with your flank, team speak, or you have played a lot and you, you know what you're doing. How do you adapt to Nitrush build as Malay in China? I already said with Malay, it's kind of tricky, not really that good with expansions, but you just want to go... Pretty much all in cat like just spam a lot of knights using the eco advantage you have until the plus two actually becomes re relevant. And China, I did cover that in the video, so that's fine. Actually, I didn't. I covered that I went up with plus one build, but it's pretty much the same deal. The, the build doesn't change. The dark age changes. You pretty much add plus one on food, and when you get the boar down, it's pretty much the same. You have four on wood, seven on boar, and the same build. What to do against enemy pocket Indians? Just go all in Castle Age Knights. Are cavalry archers ever viable? No. They're not good, ever. Knights will be just 10 times better. So that, that will be it for Reddit questions. If you have any more, you can ask down below in the YouTube section, but that will be it for this part.